kamikaze It's charisma Yeah About to take you through the ABCs Uh-huh Listen Um I think those how did that happen for me? So initially Munya Chanetsa reached out, so from Content Connect, and he, so he's been in the industry doing that kind of stuff, like Content Connect, like their, that's their thing, like yeah. um, doing like placements for music and stuff like that. So when he reached out, that's when I kind of got hip to that aspect of like music, like, yeah. you know, um, the synchronization deals. And so yeah, I signed up with Content Connect, um, and they, I mean, was the, was the deal initially for Big Brother? Yes, it was. I signed up for Content Connect and the deal was for, for Big Brother. And they used my music um, and that was cool. But like once I was hip to that, like I was now kind of looking for those opportunities. Yeah, you're like actively. Yeah, like I mean, you research it, right? Like you, you see where like, like you know, I was curious about like TV shows and um, like with, I have my background in I have my background in like video production as well. Yeah. So like I've I've got like friends who are in the industry who do that type of stuff. And when like one of my people was in position at like the production for Sugar, yeah. Like I actually like it was what was it? Who was it? Like I think it was the. Um, because how this happened, how the sugar thing happened was that, like, I just basically made my music available to them, right? Like, I just made my music available to them. I found out, like, who's the person who's in charge of the music, and then I sent in my music, right? And then they basically make you sign a release form or whatever it is. Yeah. And then, after that, it's down to the editor. Like, the editor oh, then okay. just picks from a folder. Yeah, he's got, like, right? a playlist. As they're editing, right? They're picking and choosing like, okay, this music is good for this vibe. This music yeah. is good for this vibe. I mean, I definitely think that there might be a, like, an, um, a directive to have as much music, you know, as much different music from different places. Like, I would assume that that's what they'll be doing yeah. on the production side yeah. to like, like, let's have as much music from different places. Because that's also an aspect of the marketing, right? When you hear your music on the soundtrack, I'm going to be like, yo, check this out or whatever. So, I mean, I assume that that's the case, but like, it was really down to the editor. The yeah. editor just took a liking and literally like used the entire folder. I gave them like eight songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah I read yeah. it. Was they like used, songs yeah, they used the entire folder. That, like, that's almost novel. Like, I thought it was... <laughs> I actually only sent for Shisha Pipe, like initially. I was like, this is because I wanted to get a placement for Shisha Pipe. But then they were like, no, send us like your music. So then oh, I so think, initially you said like one song? No, I didn't initially. My intention was like, this was, I was reaching out because I wanted them to yeah. take Shisha Pipe yeah. for consideration, right? Fair, fair. And then they were like, okay, cool, send us your music. They basically asked me for like as much music as I could send them. So I picked all the stuff that I thought was appropriate and I sent it to them. Like, yeah. I mean, I sent them um, Shisha Pipe, I sent them Hausachi Wambuona, I sent them like a bunch of stuff from NGNGV2, yeah. and they pretty much used all of it. Um, all Which across dope, that right? side. I don't, I don't think that anyone has more music on Sugar than I do. Like, honestly yeah. speaking, like, yeah. I don't think so. I just think that the, the, the editor just really took a liking to my music and, and just used and a bunch of it. Because it's literally all, all of the eight songs. And I've, and I've seen the... I've seen the, um, what do they call them? I forget the sheets. The sh so basically they'll send you the sheets for like when you're reporting it, like yeah. when you need to report to your PRS or whatever, they'll send you the sheets with um, all the data on like the songs that they use. And I don't think... Like any other artist has had like as, as many, many songs as, many as songs. I did. Yeah. yeah. Like some of my songs, they use them like twice. <laughs> like, so exactly. So that's the thing, right? And, and so we were talking before we started recording that... Um, like part of, of, of distribution is being in as many places as you can be, yeah. right? Like if you can be on Twitter, if you can be on TikTok, if you can be on Insta, if you can be outside as well, if you can yeah. be on these shows. Yeah. Um, I think you're more within the industry than I am. I, I am a fan and an and, and observer from outside, right? Uh, are these like uh, the new school of like Zim Hip Hop or at least I hate calling it Zim Hip Hop man. Like, 
it's you is, it is what it is. It is. <laughs> from them, right? Are they doing these things, or at least like, where does this knowledge get lost? Right. I think that's important. Actually, that's an important point. Yeah. There's a disconnect. There isn't. Um, there hasn't been a knowledge transfer. There's like a disconnect between the generations because I think that like we're in that place where um, we like the industry was young when we were coming up, yeah. right? And like yeah. there's definitely barriers that we broke. There's definitely like we raised what the ceiling was before we came. Yeah. But I definitely think that a lot of the guys that came up in our generation like didn't get that opportunity to really be commercially successful just because of many different factors like you know like the internet yes. you know the genre being young and, and them needing to do the work for the guys who are coming up to be able to have it the way it is now right? yeah. but like what that does is that they've never been successful enough to bring up other people. And the guys that were didn't do that really well. Like, yeah, yeah. The really successful guys have not been successful at bringing anyone up. Yeah. That's just a fact. It's not, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know where, where they go wrong in that sense or where the guys who've come before us have gone wrong in that sense, but there hasn't been a knowledge transfer. So like the guys that I kind of, who are around me, yeah. who I have influence over, have access to the information that I have yeah. that I've gathered through my experience right and like I think that it's important to do that it's important to, 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 to play an active role in helping the the young the younger guys who are coming up because not make the same mistakes yeah because you shouldn't have to make the same mistake they shouldn't but have to learn can I ask you something um, and and this is one of those like vague uh, cloudy questions um, could it be because it's harder for the losers to talk? And I don't mean losers in like. I mean, I don't say. It, I don't say. Way. I don't. I wouldn't say it that way. Like, I wouldn't say uh, it that way. Or at least the people who didn't like attain success. Right. So they didn't. Uh, is it if, harder if you say, to? Just because you didn't win, it doesn't mean you didn't lose, right? But be, yeah. Like. Yeah. So, yeah. Maybe so, exactly. Maybe. So. <laughs> so it's very. There's. It's two. There's two sides. To it. Yeah. If you haven't if you haven't achieved a certain level of success, people don't pay attention to what you're saying. Right? Yeah. So there's okay. there's that there's that one right, and then there's also a lot of these guys like feel like they still haven't had their shot. They okay. they 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 are still in their heart. They're still like and and I think that it's it's weird. Like we're in a weird space where like. Hip hop no longer has that age thing, right? Yep. Like it no longer yeah. has that age thing. But you might find that the platforms, um, the platforms still play to that, and the artists themselves like also play to that by not speaking their truth. They're not recording and creating music that speaks to their truth. They're trying to compete with the young guys that are coming up. But it's like the people who were young when you were young. Are older now and they there's like you can speak to those same people yeah. in in like in an art there. artistic way that they're gonna love because like trust me like older people are not listening to these like 16 17 18 19 20 year olds they, yeah. they're really not because yeah. it's like yeah it's like popular music and it's relatable and this that, and the other right and people party to that but on a day-to-day -day basis like yeah. as you get older your your music your your palette changes yeah. Right, and the the artists that are able to evolve with their fans, but still stay relevant to the younger fans are the ones that are, that always do it right. And I think that we, the OGs or the older guys or the guys who are not like the young young generation right now, yeah. the the ones that struggle are the ones that don't know how to kind of like move. Play both sides. Yeah, move with the generation. Like I've been lucky enough. I feel like I've been lucky enough to that. I've been able to stay kind of true to who I am and kind of evolve with the sounds. Because if you yeah. go back to when I really started, like the first records on like Begotten yeah. Sons Rise Up, that's like 20 years ago, bro. Yeah. Like there's, there's, like really there's, there's no, <laughs> like the first records that I was on, right? The guys who I was on records with first, like I was like the really young guy on records with like Metaphysics, Begotten yeah. Son, Pariah, um, you know, those guys right like but i was like the really young 
like 18 year old yeah. amongst those guys, like 16, 17, 18 year old amongst those guys. And like, I've seen my peers really struggle to stay, like none of my peers who are from when I from started when I or even the first 10 years of my rap career, yeah. right? You, you couldn't call them popular music now. Yeah. They're not making yeah. music that's contemporary now. Like it's like either, yeah, no, they just, people just struggle. I don't know, I don't know, like you, what Jay-Z has done, what, you know, people like Pusha, what people like yeah. Drake. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, Drake, kind of old like about. Kanye yeah. and all that, what yeah. they've done, like that's pretty special, right? And that's yeah. what I, I try and kind of, I try and pay attention to those guys. I try and pay attention to like, how they make their music. Obviously, a lot of that is collaboration as well. Yeah. You've got to be able to really understand the power of collaboration and letting other minds into your creative process. Yeah, which is not easy, right? But I think that flows uh, perfectly into collaborations. And uh, what I was saying before we started is that uh, the perception that I get looking at you from the outside, looking in, right, is that um, charisma has actively taken like a a mentorship role, uh, like management like role, where you're working with like a lot of younger artists. Uh, even just like on your Twitter, you're like dishing out free game to whoever will listen, right? Yeah. Um, to be fair, I think you've touched on why that's important, but I think it then goes into like collaborations as well, right? Like why is that such an important thing within music? Because that's something that's talked about a lot, right? Um, I was talking to you just before, we were talking about Takura and where there's been a perception where it's like, Takura, I'll be one of my features. Um, why, why would it be important for an artist to get that feature or for him to give that feature? Like in your view, like how does collaborations work? interesting that you use Takura. Yeah. So Takura is one of those artists who, like, I mean, we know his background from like, um, the group with Adrian Tate, what's that? Um, Soul Africa, Soul yes. Africa. Yes. Um, so he was like a pop star already, right? Um, Takura going into like the hip hop space, like he is naturally good. It's like, it's like Chris Brown going into hip hop. Right. Yeah. Naturally, Chris Brown is going to be like bigger than like he's going to come with his people. Like, and he's going to be, and his potential for like his 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 mass appeal and whatever. If you're able to package what Takura does in hip hop, right, like instantly, he's got mass appeal, and he's a very he's like a phenomenally talented guy, guy. Right? Yeah. Like he knows how to write music, like. And if he chooses to do it in hip hop, if he chooses it to, to do it in R and B, if he chooses whatever, to do it in Afro pop, like he's an, he's a brilliant he's a brilliant guy. Now, a lot of people will, in the context of Takura specifically, yeah. a lot of people will will be like, no, but is he hip hop or isn't he hip hop or whatever, right? But like, yeah. I think the part that those guys play, like guys who are like Takura who are in that middle kind of like pop star, singing, rapping, they whatever. They can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want, right? Those guys play the roles of like guys like Ty Dolla Sign, like Chris Brown, or whatever. Those guys are a gateway to the mainstream for actual rappers. Like, you know like the guy who's like a yeah. hardcore rapper? Yeah. When he, does, when he does a collaboration with, when, when that guy does a collaboration with a Takura, he's being broken out into like mainstream. mainstream. And that's like, Takura's the gateway. Takura could play that part, um, someone like Nyasha David, like same way, like like yeah. what he's done with Vault. Yeah. Like you, That's a like, song. like do you know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. Those those guys, that position that they play is so important. You yeah. can't have a mainstream industry without those guys. If you go back to like um, way back when hip hop was like really breaking away, when like you know Jay Z was doing records with Maya, like there was the there were like the singers who really yeah. leaned into the hip hop thing. Yeah. Like you could listen to their albums and they were kind of like really hard rappy beats and like they used to collaborate with like the rappers, people like 112, like all that type of stuff. So through every cycle there's always going to be those guys like, and yeah, you call them hip hop, that's fine. But those guys, like the importance of collaborating with people like that is that they, what they give you is that like say 
16 to 28 year old female fan base, right? That yeah. really that really drives culture. <laughs> like those yeah. people drive culture. Yeah. Like if you've got if those people really love your music, the club is playing your music. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You're getting booked. You're, the first, the first all of, of all, all of that type of stuff. Because those, those, those are the people who, like, as well as like really young kids, like really young school kids, mm-hmm. those people drive, those people drive, like, culture just, just through. Culture broadly, right? Yeah, just through the way, pe- like, platforms respond to those people. And so I want to bring it back to you uh, specifically. One of the things you've said, um, I think this was around the time when ASAF, RPOs and Sun Union 5 back then were first coming out, right? And, and one of the things you were saying was that you, you hope that their generation didn't make the same mistakes as, as you guys, uh, that's the OGs as we said, mm-hmm. right? What are some of those mistakes? Yo, um... Coming up, we made a lot of mistakes. Yes. Um, <laughs> as and there was, like, like yes. some of our peers made mistakes as well. Things that, like, yeah. I mean, that coming from the outside or, or, or being an outsider, like, that I envied about certain people. So I'll, I'll give you a list. Yes. One, um, collaboration. Definitely 100% we didn't collaborate as much as a genre amongst ourselves. There was definitely this whole North Samora, South Samora thing yeah. that like... I still feel like... That, that, is it still there? No, it's there. Um, Man, not so, me not so much, but like <laughs> that thing just became bigger than it was ever supposed to have gotten, right? That divide, um, that whole like Few Kings MMT beef thing, that was like probably the biggest mistake, right? Um, that we made as collectively amongst ourselves. But I mean, we were young, we were definitely like <laughs> very, very hot-headed at the time. And like, it was hip hop, right? But it was supposed to come full circle. Like, yeah. it never came full circle. Yeah. Like, we never like came together afterwards, right? Like, and that's one of the things that like stopped us. Like. We we definitely leaned into the whole like let me call it the whole Salah rappers and the like ghetto rappers like we leaned into that we're like you know what I mean like because like we were no because we like I think it's on that I think it's important that like you are like you stand in who you are like you you stand firmly in who yeah. you are, what 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 makes you who you Did are. Do you mean like within the music, like the music? No, just in general, like as a brand. Like I mean, okay. like I shouldn't ever pretend that I'm in front of in front of a church. Like no, I'm not right. But then I also think that like in leaning into that at the time, that whole beef and thing like just definitely divided the industry in two, right? Yeah. That hurt the trajectory of Zim Hip Hop, yeah. essentially, like, I believe, like, I think it's a golden era, like, definitely, that was, like, a golden era, but, like, what you see happening now is, like, that means more. Yeah, it's much healthier. Like, it's a like, much healthier, way, much broader kind of market. market. Like, you get everything now, like, and, and, and I think that, like, you're getting a lot of collaborations as well like it's yeah, important that guys collaborate yeah. so and i just hope that they continue doing that like i think that the bigger guys could definitely collaborate more like but that's just me as a fan wanting to see always one yeah. yeah but there's a there's a healthy amount of collaboration going on right now there's more platforms i mean just you know the video directors Ooh. you know like all that type there's of a stuff. lot of work going on yeah, yeah. that's that stuff right. all of those things play a part very important right where bef- when we were doing it like i was shooting the videos like i shot like the first four videos of sotg3 like we were doing that ourselves right and like and that affects something. and if it wasn't for that like we were good and like i mean i learned how to do videos because it was so expensive at the time to get like a to, to do like a video, right? Like it was like a big thing. So like <laughs> it's like figuring out that whole thing, getting like a little DSLR camera, figuring out how to edit, how to yeah. color correct, and then doing it ourselves. Like, yeah. like now a lot of these guys don't even have to worry about video production. Because yeah. there's like, you a know what I'm saying? Like I'm willing to, to, to work with And it's guys. also evolved that like, 
you know, most of these guys have got like an in-house guy. Like one of one of the guys in their team is like, yeah. you know, like you've got your camera set up and stuff. Yeah. You could be in the mid, you could be in the middle of a rap crew, and you're like, I'm the video guy. Like, yeah. so you're seeing a lot more of that happening as well, and that's great. That's the evolution, right? Just people understanding, like, m better, like how to like increase your capacity to yeah. create and and stuff. So that's really dope. I yeah. like that. Like, so. That's beautiful, right? Before we get in too deep, I want to talk to you about uh, music. What are you currently working on? Because your last project, uh, Fakaza, that was brilliant. Uh, loved, the, loved the production on that. Loved the, the storytelling. It was, um, I think the way I would, I would describe that is like a, a, a really like introspective like, like album. Uh, I don't know if that's what you were going for, but that's what I got. Um, so I'm interested to know, Goody, what's the next... The next challenge, the next story you're trying to tell as, as, as Charisma. I feel like, I feel like I never really got to release for Charisma. Right? Like, that's like, that's like kind of I, true. ideally if I wanted like, okay, so let me tell you what happened with Fakazi first of all. So Fakazi um, was like my comeback um, art project. Okay. Right? Like, it was yeah. like, an art, like something that I was really passionate about. And I connected with this producer like in like lo-fi hip hop. He's actually like world famous. Like the producers on Fakazi are crazy. Like um, this dude called Soul Chef from New Zealand, right? Soul Chef, like crazy producer. Like in that space, in that like jazzy lo-fi hip hop. And then and then I, yeah, and then another guy called um, Phil Chronics from Venice. Yeah. So with that project, I really wanted to do that, but I wanted to like make a project that's like too cool but like rap yeah right so like if you like yeah. if too cool was like a young guy in this day and age and he was making rap what would he make? that's what, what would he make right so like i had these guys do like the like jazzy beats and everything like i searched i i connected with them through like um cynic and um, Razor Biza, this other dude, like who used to, like Zamir Rapper, who now in New Zealand, like he's big out there. So I connected with them and then they gave me the beats and then I asked them if it was okay if I could add like a layer of Afro beats, like bongo, percussion, on top of these like boom bappy, jazzy hip hop beats. And they're like, cool. So, and then it was now a process of going through many different producers trying to find the right guy to, to play. Yeah, and then it ended up being Adrian Tate and Simba Tags who added the percussion. So when you listen to Fakazi, like that, like it's like just in, the way I made them, the way I had them do it was just added as an extra instrument. So kind of imagine because it was produced like a band, like very live sounding. So it was like just kind of add the percussions as like an extra member of that band. So it doesn't sound like too extra. It really blends in. Sometimes you don't even notice it. We did that, and like I really wanted to put together this really classic piece of music. So anyway, it took me ages to put it together. Yeah. And then, um, like I got a band together, like we we're gonna do the whole family live tour and everything. And then I soft released it. Like I just put it on, I put it onto DSPs, but I didn't promote it or anything. I was like, I'm gonna tour this record, right? Come end of 2019, like I had had a band rehearsing for like six months. Like, starting off with like the December 2019 unplugged and then I was gonna now do the like monthly like finally live shows right yeah. we did like the launch of the finally live thing at the fresh farm and everything and then the pandemic hit oh fucking hell exactly and then fucking hell. I didn't I, I actually didn't piece it together yeah so like that album never like we literally did like the first show which was unplugged then like the friends and family first so kind of like the one that happened in, it happened in January. Like, so it happened at the first okay. one in January. Like, yeah. Um, and yeah, so like my friends, like they were the first to kind of get the finally live experience with the whole band and everything. And then we were going to take that on the road, like different countries and, and, and whatever. Like two years. And the pandemic no hit outside. and then two years, no one's outside. <laughs> nothing. And damn, then, damn, so like eventually, damn. like I didn't do yeah, a single video. Was like heartbreaking. Yeah, I didn't do a single <laughs> video, didn't do singles or anything. So it's like, when you ask me what's next, <laughs> It, it kind of hurts because like I feel like that's what's next but it's not really so yeah. I've been recording yeah. now I've been consciously recording like 
actively recording for maybe like when I say actively, I mean as in recording multiple, because like I record every now and again, right? Yeah. Um, but like actively for the last six months, I think. No, not six months, like eight months now. Yeah. Just putting together music. Um, so I'm in a different space now. Like I really just want to make music. Like I want to make all kinds of music. I think it's important to make, to, to create and release. Um, yeah. I'm in a space where like, I've got like a wife, a kid now, and I'm I'm also just very much like I want my daughter to like see my music. I wanted to like, I wanted to hear my music. I want I want I, I, I don't want her to I want her to see it while while she, I want I want her to see it like not to be, hear about like and like I'm I'm always gonna make music but like I'm definitely making music for her now for my daughter yeah. more than anything else like <laughs> as like a legacy thing like I don't want them to, I don't want my daughter to ever be told like yo your dad was nice like he was dope like no like I wanted to actually like experience and like that's what I love about what the generation that we're in now where before hip hop was like a young man sport, yeah. and that was a function of the industry. That was a function of the record label. Where every year we need the new twenty-one year old, yeah. right? And they were the people who controlled what we heard and what we saw. And now, you know, you've got a lot of very powerful artists like the Drakes, the Kanyes, you know, like independent who've got independent organizations, and they put out their own music. So they're not victims of like the system like anymore. Like, and, like and like where it's like, bro, like the Grammy Award winners for the last maybe two or three years are like upwards 35. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like music is now with Jay-Z is about to drop. Nas is dropping regularly. Yeah. Like Pusha T. And these are like guys in their 50s. Like, like, yeah, like Kanye is in his 40s. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, so it's not, we just have to catch up to that as well. Yeah. Like my generation just needs to be making music for people who want to hear what they have to say. You know, like I've got I've got stories for days about my my life and what my reality yeah. is. Like that are completely different from what Saint Flo and Holy yeah, Ten. because you, you speak about like it's a different fatherhood, perspective. marriage. Yeah, like, that's different from like, like even just my day to day experience. Back. Like my day to day. <laughs> If I'm going to a <laughs> night out, my night out is a completely different Dude, night out yeah, from, to, from me. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just 25. Exactly. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So when I'm listening to K Flow, I'm hearing a completely different reality yeah. to what my. Yeah, K Flow is hard as well, man. Like, yeah, that's like my favorite <laughs> artist right now. Yeah, I, I, like, my most favorite yeah, artist. Touche. Touche. Well, yeah. Like, so, so yeah, like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's it, really. Like, I think. Yeah, making music, making music and is, releasing it. Making music and releasing <laughs> it, like creating. Like if you if you're talented, and you you've got that gift of of being able to create. Like we're makers of things. Yeah. Right? Like it's not just about vibes and whatever. Like being able to create something and put it out there that people want to listen to, that people are gonna dance to, cry to. Yeah. You know, like celebrate their moments and their milestones. Like it's a part of life. Part yeah, of life. like I think it's a, it's it's so important that the people who've been given that gift, like honor that gift and yeah. and that's my that's what I feel. I feel like I have been I have been given a gift that I have to honor. I have to yeah. honor the talents and honor the like all these all these things that like people look at and. I have to be reminded sometimes by people that like, yo, like what you do is like, not really every, yeah, not everybody can do it, and it could be, it'll be random, it'll be someone who just, someone who um who walks up to me and just goes, yo, charisma, thank you for the music, bro, like, or like I really like this, what like you know they'll be like trying to remember the name of like or a lyric from a song, and like yo, there's this lyric that I really love, I like really from like you, exactly. you know that type of stuff, yeah. right? And and I think. I think that's a trap that we as creators fall into, like, um, like cynicism. Um, it's very like easy to be like cynical as a creator, um, yeah. like extremely. I don't know why, <laughs> but like you're saying, I have those moments where sometimes I, like last night, I bumped into someone and they said like the most random thing to me. They said, um, "You're the biggest taste maker in age right now," and to me that was mind blowing because I barely go outside, and I'm like. 
I don't, I don't see myself in that, in that lens, right? But here's someone else saying that, and it's like, hmm, that's interesting. That's like a, a different layer to me that I didn't... And you don't... And this is why I say that people have to go outside sometimes. Yeah. Like, you, you have to go outside and touch and feel people to, to get a sense of what's happening. Because a lot of creators will stop. Like, a lot of creators will, will just get so locked into, like, pumping out content and, and whatever that they don't pay attention to, like, the effect that they're having on people. You have to use people as... Um, People are a touch point yeah. of data as much as your, your dashboard or whatever, on yeah. like your dashboard with your metrics on, on YouTube. People are just as much a touch point that you have to pay attention to. Like you have to pay attention to what do people really like when people approach you and they say, Yo, I really like like what are they saying? Yeah. What are those things? Like what are the interviews that people go out of their way to come to you and yeah. say, like, you know, I love that. Um, <laughs> What, is the, what are the demographics of the people that reach out to you, that come up to you? Do you know what I mean? All those things. Like, sometimes the data on the platform is not telling you the true story. Like the because story, it yeah. could be that, like, you've got some WhatsApp group somewhere that's taking clips of your stuff and sharing it. Yeah, it's like a whole... Like thousands of and people. And those are yeah. people that you, that you don't know you're and you don't know to pay attention yeah. to because yeah. you're not paying attention. You're just locked in inside your studio recording people, yeah. putting the content out and, and not yeah, going out there to like feel the effect of, of what of it is. what the work you're doing is. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I think yeah. it's always important. Yeah. Like, whenever, whenever I go outside, I always, something always happens that like reinforces like my beliefs yeah. or like my like need to create my need to create like it, it's always reinforced it would be random like but it always happens when you're outside because people are paying attention bro. yeah yeah way more than you would yeah would, like would i haven't put out music in years like like i mean the freestyles that i've put out and stuff yeah. like that i don't consider that to be releases but people definitely come up to me and they're like yo yeah. bro like when is the like some people will be like flat they'll be like pissed that like no, I stopped don't. making music like oh yeah. why did you retire and I'm yeah. like no I'm actually making music but <laughs> they don't know any better because I'm not putting it out fair you know what and I mean? so that's an important thing that you've been hinting at and and explicitly stating as well right like it's not just creating it's also putting stuff out into the world why is that like so important because I mean, why is it like? I'll tell you why I think it's important for rappers to put out, yeah. to put out music, right? I mean, it relates to everyone. But the thing I tr I try to tell rappers now is that, like, think of it as building, right? Like, if you looked at it like this, if I came to you yeah. and I said to you that the lifetime value of this song, right, over the next 30 years, or rather, let's talk in, in, in the context of you yeah. as a, an episode. Like, yeah. The, life, the lifetime value of this episode, if you continuously and consistently put out put music, out the lifetime yeah. value of this one episode is going to be 50 grand. If I told you that today, yeah. how many episodes a week would you make? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You'd make more, right? Because now you're looking at it from that, from what it, what you're the value. Thinking 50 grand. Right. So, I try and tell people, I try and tell musicians that look at your music like real estate. Think of it like you're building a house. That over the next 25 years mm. can potentially give you X amount of money, but you need to continuously mm. be yeah. creating more out. houses <laughs> because it's like it's real estate in the sense that like. You put out this song and 10 people listen to it, right? You've got your 10 fans and let's say each of them maybe introduces you to one other person. So now you've got like 20 fans. 10 yeah. of them are hardcore. 10 of them are like, you know. On the fin. Like, but they know you. Like right? they'll listen to the next song yeah. hoping it's yeah, 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 a cool, bit better right? than the last thing. You put out the <laughs> next song, right? Yeah. Those people, those 20 people are going to listen. So as well as the new people that are listening, right? Those 20 people are going to listen to that new yeah. song, right? A compound interest. Right? And there's the compound interest. Like, and you put out the next song, they listen to the three songs. Yeah. You put out another song, they <laughs> listen to that. So it's like, and it can get more complex where it's like, okay, cool. So each song, like, is going to be super hot for them. Like, play it every day yeah. for a year. And then, like, after the second, after the first year, yeah. they're playing it once 
a week. And then after the third year, they're playing it once a month, right? And then after the fourth but year, they play, the like, right? they play it on their birthday or when they're working out or like... When or when they're, they're like, I miss charisma. But then, but then you've got to give them a new song to get into that four-year cycle, Fair. right? Fair. Everything, like you've got Fair. to keep on refreshing because it's like, that one's going to get stale. So you've got to give them a new vibe. They need a new story. You've got to give them a new angle. You've got, and it's like, if we just look at it like that and... and the value of it overall, but then also for artists, like you're in so, a, so like a better place to negotiate yeah. when you've got a catalog, right? You've yeah. got to, you've got to, right? you've, got to your, you've got to have your, you've got to have your own value that you that you possess outside of being signed by a record label. So when yeah. you're going, when you're our pills and you're going into a conversation with a record label, and you've got a hundred tracks on the DSPs and mm. you're raking in, let's say, for example, like just for, let's, for example, sake, let's say a thousand dollars. Those people are not going to be able to offer you a five hundred dollar yep. deal. Yeah. And you're performing like every week. Yeah, you're, you're performing every week. And, you're, and your, your, your books are saying that like guys were bringing in two grand a month or three grand yeah. a month, right? Yeah. Somebody who's walking into the room and boy. offering you two and a half grand. <laughs> you're like... Why? You, you're Why? laughing them out of the room, right? Yeah. Like, so you it makes you more powerful when it comes to negotiating when you're able to like increase your own value. We yeah. only increase our value by creating more stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Also, another thing, every single time you create a song, yeah. right? It's, again, data. Use the data. Every time you create a song, you figure out what you figure out what people like about you a bit more, right? The guy who puts out a song every single week, like one song a week, yeah. figures out sooner what his final form is versus versus the guy who puts out one every six months. So you put out the love song, and you know the girls come up to you and go, "Oh, I love that voice that you do, right?" Yeah. And then you figure out, okay, cool. This time I figured out there's that kind of voice thing. Let's so then the next it. time you do another record, but you use that voice. There's a voice and something. And you else. see the girls are responding, and then the dudes come to you and they go, "Oh yeah, no, your storytelling is like, okay, cool storytelling with that voice or whatever." And then it's like you yeah. put out another song, and you get, oh, you're yeah. constantly figuring out that okay, cool, let's move this brand in this direction. Yeah. You, you see it with all the artists that put out regularly. At some point, they figure it out, and then it's like you stop missing because you've put out enough you've music, formula, you've right? learned enough to understand what your formula is, what your brand is, what people really like about you, yeah. and you're able to deliver that every time. Whereas, like, if you're putting out once every six months, like, it's going to take you five years to figure out who you are. And sometimes you don't have that. And sometimes you never figure it out because you're just not putting out enough yeah. music. So, and you're tired it, as well, man. <laughs> yeah, there's multiple layers. You, you, and, and like, life is happening in between that. Yeah, years, like, and right? I like, say this to rappers that, like, are you, look at yourself like an athlete, right? Look at hip-hop like a sport. Yeah. If you're an elite athlete, right, nothing is stopping you from writing one song a day. Yeah. Like nothing is stopping you. may not yeah. write that hit song, but, but nothing is stopping you from writing that one song a day, right? And then if you put out the best of those songs every single week, right? Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You're already, yeah, you're, you're already, tech, like, man. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you're able to then, you're, you're able to then even look at it, like look at the data and go, okay, so for every four, like I'm hitting, Every single One four, theory. every single four, four times. Four times. <laughs> yeah. So if I put out sixteen tracks, I'm going to have four hit songs yeah. at least, right? Yeah. But you and, don't. And that's enough. Right? Those are the systematic ways in which you can kind of like create and put stuff out and and figure out like the yeah. direction and and how like it doesn't yeah. hurt you to put out music in this day and age, bro. Like exactly, you know? and, and and I like what you're saying because it's also. I think sometimes what creators lose sight of is, is creation is also like an act of bravery. So that mm. experimentation is um, a lot of things have to fall flat. That's mm. a part of like uh, the process. Yeah. So I love what you're saying, like 4 and 16 being hits and the other being like maybe mid and some being terrible and that's still being fine. But you, you, the more you put out, right, you, you hit a level where it's like... Like terrible, yeah. It's like, yeah, like it's now like we're saying like who's the worst in the Champions League, right? 
Exactly. Everyone like, is a top four in there. Like, right? you Everyone know, is a the, you but there's, do you know what I mean? Like, like, there's going to be the guy who gets the trophy, was. right? But it's the Champions League. And that's what I'm saying. That like, You can be on mainstream radio and your song is not a hit song. Yeah. But if you've got enough of those songs that people know, yeah. plus your hit song, <laughs> like, you've got that 20 minutes of hit songs and yeah. then like another 30 minutes of... The it's song different. that, like, you know, this the song that this guy studies to, or this is a, yeah. he still listens to that song 10 times a month, right? That's still yeah. going to be an experience for them. Like, yeah. hit songs are not the be all and end all, but you do need them to break into that. Let's also talk about the fact that, like, having hit songs with 20 minutes is um, a year of work because you can perform on that, right? Like, yeah. you can touch stage on that. That's when, that's when you become valuable to a promoter, that's when you become valuable to, like, the festivals. Right? If they can trust you with the crowd for 20 minutes, for 20 to 30, like yeah. 20 minutes of songs is like a 30 minute yeah. performance, right? Yeah. If I yeah. can trust you with my crowd for 30 minutes, You're good. and I know that like they're gonna come there to seek that experience of you, right? Then like I'm paying you what for you sure. ask for, right? Like you name your price when you get to that point. <laughs> so I tell these artists that get to that 20 minutes as quickly as possible, Yeah. right? Like it gives you fig to yeah, figure out how to get to that 20 minutes as quickly as possible and then once you're there right you can start you experimenting can start. people give you grace once you're yeah. at that point once you're like a real thing like and you've got like your you've got your lock yeah, your people, people give you grace yeah. to like experiment <laughs> and collaborate and do whatever but the main thing is like get to that 20 minutes as quickly as possible yeah. like as soon as you can put out those songs like if it means that you're putting out every week and it's like every three songs or every four songs yeah. is the one that goes into that 20 minutes then bro like yeah. just be you get there sooner than you anticipate yeah definitely yeah. one thing that comes up a lot is how important is radio um and some people are like radio in abasa uh build your fan base outside uh and then force radio to play you some people are like radio in abasa um I think artists have a truer view because you guys are in the work mm. versus fans. Fans say anything, man. Like, <laughs> right? There's context, right? Yes. So it depends on who you are. Okay. Let's say. My young G just called. He said he saw me in the papers. Let's take. K Flow and. Denim Woods, for example, okay. right? Um, and radio is important. Let's just put that. Let's just put it in the context of Zimbabwe. Radio is important, right? Like that is like the biggest mass media that we have in this country. So it's very, very, very important. Do we have people in place in radio who understand their importance and are doing the doing the work that? They should be very few, um, but that's a story for another day. What my what my what my thing is, what my point is, is that like, as an artist, right, you need to understand where your market is. Denim Woods' market is not necessarily on radio, and when I say radio, I mean Radio Zimbabwe, and not like not necessarily not necessarily Star FM, ZFM, Star FM, like Power FM, not necessarily those guys. Okay, okay. The real radio, like where it's like the radio that influences what that top 100 is, right? Yeah. Like those guys, you know when you hear those random guys were in like the top 10, yeah, when you hear like that we we'll never hear on ZFM or Star like, FM. Exactly, right. because like the masses in this country are not really listening to these yeah. metro, these metro yeah. radio stations, yeah. right? That is, those radio Zimbabwe or whatever, like for the product that you are, for a K-Flow, Natio, XQ, whatever, right? Like massively, massively important. If your product is not necessarily that mass market, like you're a niche product or whatever, right? Then, not necessarily. It's not necessarily yeah. important. But it's great for you to be on there well, because, because you're still gonna get your one in five or your one in ten because they they there who are gonna have a maybe more like let's call it contemporary like palette for music, yeah. like yeah. and they lean to well, that. they listen to everything. So yeah, they listen to everything, so you're gonna get there, right? So like it's that. always context. <laughs> what are you trying to do but but radio is very important radio is extremely important we don't have a healthy enough industry with multiple platforms yeah. for you to be able and, to and not enough people online as well we don't yeah talk about like you can't online. you can't circumvent that 
<laughs> you can't. You, there's no way of getting around that. Like yeah. the guys who are on real radio right now are bigger than anything. Like it's always been. It's always, it's always been, been the case. case as well. It's always been the case. Like you know, the hundred percent or ninety nine percent local era, or whatever. Like. Yeah. You can see the people who came up in that time and how those people, th that generation are still a real thing right now. for the most part yeah. right now yeah. because of how solid like their fan base is through, through radio. being the on radio. Is built. Yeah, yeah, being on radio all the time. So yeah, yeah listen, yeah. To, the, listen okay. to the radio. Okay. The guys who are big on radio right now, if you're big on radio, you're big you're in big the streets. Just like 100%. Well. Yeah. Like it's very rare that like, you're big on the internet and it doesn't translate to radio, to radio. and you're actually hitting the mass market. It, 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 yeah. Not in yeah. not in Zimbabwe. Well, I mean, I mean, once I, I suppose once you're like popular on radio, naturally the next thing is once you're popular on the internet, the the natural next step is radio is gonna have to pick it up. We and, and and no, like our, our radio personalities, popular being our radio popular. personalities do not. <laughs> They do not necessarily play that. They do not necessarily play that no. game. Like you, <laughs> yeah. you, like it's not. It's it's not a given that yeah. like yeah. you you yeah. you gain momentum on radio and they're gonna come out there and find you. Yeah, I it's see. Not, a lot of, uh, I lot see of that right that now. Like personal and I don't know, man. I yeah. Let's not even. Yeah. Like it's it's not. It's, <laughs> it's like it's quite funny actually that like radio personalities right now are still like they're only like. This whole Holy Ten, Saint Flo, like this is the first time that the musicians are like in hip hop are starting are to get are starting to get bigger than the radio personality. Yeah, because you always have that like hip hop was like these little yeah little brands that like didn't yeah. necessarily break away. Like, <laughs> but now these guys are becoming superstars, and because of a lot of a lot of these guys are actually they don't pay attention to radio because of the way radio's attitude was before. So, they, so well. they don't respect those platforms. Yeah, it's not like... So there's no, the there's no synergy between the... There is a strong synergy between the artists and, and the radio. radio because historically there was always, there was always like friction between the yeah. radio and the artists because the radio wasn't breaking the artists. Yeah. 